So I'm armed with my working on cars jacket and some household scissors and a very uh, limited selection of sockets. I'm gonna take the car apart, strip it all down. Nice. Oh. I think that's really annoying about being too low is when it squats and stuff, it just starts biting straight into the tire, like straight down to the wire. So I want to avoid that this year. You can see surprisingly strong fiberglass and it's done that. As we laugh here, I've got so much rubber and stones in here. Over the season, you, you gain in these. Mmm. Lovely. Not too bad. You can see, see even rub in here. But general condition's pretty decent. So the magic of a drift car is a. Uh, most stuff it's just finger tight so you don't actually don't actually need hand tools you just need your hand your hand is the tool it's quite hilarious really where all this rubber gets under the scuttle here couple of years, or probably, actually probably just the season's worth of stuff. So priority for us today is to fix the, uh, or replace the rack that I bent at Three Sisters a couple of weekenders ago. At the end of the, end of the day I um, went straight into a pothole at the beginning of the lap and uh, completely bent it so then I found this out later on at a driftland day or weekender and we bent it back in the pits with a massive lever bar made out of a load of different uh, jack handles obviously not ideal bit of a janky way of doing things but it got the rack straight enough to uh, continue driving but it was terrible in like a straight line so every time you sort of center and self-correct, it would then shake it out of your hands, the, the steering wheel. That's obviously not ideal, but I mean, it was weirdly okay every time you're, you're fully sideways. So you can still carry on doing a drift day, but it just doesn't feel right. So we've got a rack from an old breaker I had, which isn't the best looking rack, but it seemed to uh, steer and not have any problems. So hopefully that does the trick. Bow, 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 bow. Steering rack is off ball. You think that's straight? That looks straight to me, mate. And I can't see how that would create a wobble at straight speeds anyway. Think about it. But you know when it so when it first happened was at Three Sisters at the end of the day, wasn't it? Yeah, and I went, went over the rumble strips quite badly, didn't we? And then you was like you know, shaking like a motherfucker, wasn't it? And that's what bent the rack, yeah? And then you forgot yeah. about it basically, went to another drift day. And then the wheel wobble was there. So sorry, then. sorry, no. Initially, before I bent the rack back, it would, uh, you'd kick it out, and um, it, it would just, stuck. it would just stay there. Yeah. Wherever you, wherever you kicked it out, the wheel would then move and just lock wherever it wanted to. Um, so we bent the rack back. Angle C. Angle C. Yeah, it was it's still. Angle C, yeah. Then we. I knew it was. Then you got that wobble straight away down the straight, wasn't it? it but what? Okay. So. For the rest of Driftland, I, like it was there. It's drivable and, sorry, driftable. It's just really crap when you straighten up and I could deal with that. Don't go straight, fam. 
Well, that's what I mean, I didn't. So, who, uh... right, so then, when, when we got the wobble at angle, see, then we, I remember we went into the pits and we checked all the bearings and the ball joints, and they were sweet. Yeah. And then we carried on for the rest of the day anyway. Mm -hmm. so I don't expect to see that real bend, yeah? And look how easy it is to turn it. It gets a bit stiff there. I mean, we did straighten it surprisingly well for a so, lever bar out of jack handles. So, I mean, it's free, free, yeah? Nice and free. Look, and if it was bent, it would bind, yeah? So it, it only starts to bind because I've seen it physically. About there, which is more than straight. But because I've seen it, like, it was physically really bad, and we've bent it back. Because the middle of the rack is about there, and. That's the only resistance then. On just and there's no movement in that. So just after centre, which might explain when you're driving in a straight line. Why would it wiggle though? Yeah, it's proper violent. Yeah, I know it's, uh, unless when your wheel is badly buckled. Huh. That's, that's possibly what it is, your wheel's super buckled. Poss mm, possible. Because we checked the ball joints and the bearings at angle seat when we, we went out, I remember he'd done like one lap and we was like, f***ing hell. Yeah, he couldn't, couldn't even drive it. Yeah, as soon as you went straight it was like, wasn't it? And it's still, uh, when you're coming off a drift it is kind of like that as well. And then when you're, sorry, when you're slowing down, you've just come off drift and you straighten up, you know when it's proper like, it's still like, da 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 da. Violent, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's not, not, not got no play in it. And you're sure it was this side that you damaged the rack, yeah? 100%, yeah. So there's no play in that and I've already checked that. There's nothing in that either. And there ain't really anything else. Top mount, but... Not top mount side, is it? The only other thing could be is a bearing, but we'll check the bearing. Because we're going to be putting on bigger spaces as well, that's one thing we need to properly check as well. Well, that's definitely f***ing bearings. I mean, you do run quite a lot of camber on the front. I do, yeah. So it's quite likely it has to tube the bearing. What else did? Well, uh, I think it was that side that the brake used to bind a tiny bit. And then we, at the tyre shop, we freed it up very quickly. But I'd never done more than freeing it up quickly before a drift day. That was why one of my concerns was the brakes might be a bit binding. That's f***ing stiff, man. That's definitely binding. Oh no, I don't want to have to re rebuild some calipers. But to be fair, this side is the same. So really we want to sit the calipers off. It spins then without the calipers on. So the calipers are off and it spins freely and then the calipers are great. Mate, so you know that violent shake? Would would that sort of slightly binding cause that? Mm -hmm. We now need to free off some brakes to see if that's one other problem. Check the bearings as well, which could cause the shake that I'm experiencing. So really, we need to find out if your wheels are buckled. So we need to put them, spin them all on the balance on to see if any of them are buckled. Which they've all been moved around now as well, aren't they? Before I refurb them, yeah, it would make sense to check all of them. Definitely more free than the other one. It's half, one, so that should be the middle. One, and a half, yeah. That's the middle there. This definitely feels better than the other one. Yeah, it feels better than the other one. The list has got longer instead of shorter. Um, we replaced the rack. Well, surprisingly, we, we managed to bend the other one back quite straight. So we don't know if that was causing the shake. Uh, both front calipers are pretty seized as well, probably from it sitting still. But it, it, I have had problems with the, the calipers seizing before. Um, so we're gonna do a rebuild kit on both of those. We've got quite a lot of oil leaking from the rocker gasket and like the front seal while the looks of things and possibly even the back of the gearbox. So I've got to do a lot of preventative maintenance there as well, as well as relocate the uh, pass. Safe to say there's a lot to do before I can start making a pretty. I've also got to do all the fettling of the body kit um, and all that stuff as well, but that's another step. I've got to make sure she uh, runs right first and make sure everything's fine. Three days later.
relocation wise, you, uh, you're going to put the pass over here? No, the power steam pump's going to be down here, but yeah, the reservoir yeah. over there somewhere, yeah, or something. Because I'll, I'll put the catch can here with this massive grenaded battery tray because I can drain loads of shit and stuff, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, you can have the reservoir here and the catch can like here as well next to it because there's a nice little chunk of space here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is out of the way of any moving parts. Mm-hmm. So What got delivered today was some oil from OP. We've got Conceptua have sent me my yeah Conceptua have sent me my um, uh, rebuild kit, which is good. Demon Tweaks have sent me my race coolant, which is good. The Four Life Racing coolant. Got some iridium spark plugs for the service. I believe these are my 50 mil spacers. So I've got a Mishimoto. Uh, catch can that came in the post today. It's a pretty sexy build. I don't know if you can catch that on the camera, but it's really nicely made. It's quite weighty as well. And then the, uh, the fixings as well, really quite nice. That's a Tom Ginn review. Looks nice, mate. See it. You can see a lot of car gas here. That's the seals for the front and the gearbox. All the rubbers, the calipers, all the pistons to the calipers. Most importantly, it's my sweets. Power steering relocation, fill the power steering from fluid, cool. Change engine oil and filter, cool. Engine coolant, clutch and trace securing down, hydro pin, yeah. back caliper rebuild, bleed in the brakes, cam cover gasket, seat bracket, remove airbag module and fit the fire extinguisher, cut off the spoiler. So yeah, we've got quite a long list of just small preventative maintenance kind of stuff. We're going to get cracking straight away on just all the small bits like servicing and all that. As well as doing the over fenders, we're going to actually cut out the arches and finally put on some 50 mils on the rear. Still got to get to the bottom of what's causing that shake. I don't know why I was thinking it was the rack. The more I think about it, the more I realise that that wouldn't cause a shake, no matter what condition it's in, I suppose. So I need to get all eight wheels uh, balanced up. I'll get my friend Charlie to get his mobile van and spin them up and see what's, what's going on there. Plenty to be getting on with. Uh, whilst Kev does most of the mechanicals and relocations and things like that, I'm going to start cracking on with the body kit and fettling that and making sure that fits all right revealing what the look for 2020 will be that's it for today's video guys if you liked it yeah subscribe and like and follow me it'd be wicked to hear your thoughts on what videos you'd like to see from the car and other cars that i've got as well as behind the scenes photo shoots and things like that let me know what you want to see and i'll record it cheers <laughs>